All right, we're back. Shares of Pepsi. There they are, trading higher by some 2%. That's after a beat and raise quarter. Surat, you own it. Talk to me. I do. I mean, last week was, you know, the stock went down 5% with Coke and the Zempic fears. Pepsi is one of these companies, Scott, I want to own in the next two to three years because they have pricing power. They have secular growth. They've really mixed. They've changed the mix into snacks that are doing well. And I think the company, in terms of balance sheet, increasing its dividend, you want to have this as part of your core portfolio. Josh Brown, your final trade last Friday, you, you mentioned Pepsi, as a matter of fact. Uh, said, so come on, come on, look at the chart. It's a, a, obscenely overdone. You're talking about the pullback. W what do you think about this here? Yeah. Yeah, I still, think it's, I still think it's a buy. I'm not in the stock, and I know it's had a nice bounce off of that level. I think it was like 160 or 159 when I first mentioned it. Uh, I don't believe the story that all of a sudden everyone's going to give up Frito-Lay and uh, full sugar soda. Uh, I do believe that there could be some behavioral changes at the margin. You have 20 million people around the world currently on GLP-1 inhibitors. I understand that there will be some truth to that story. I think it's way overdone in the price of the stock, and today's results bear that out. So uh, one thing that we shouldn't underestimate is Coke and Pepsi's ability over the decades to move when it's time for them to move and to make changes in the product they're selling to reflect the, 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 the no, no pun intended, the, the taste of the next generation. So Pepsi has done that over and over again, and I think the stock's okay here. Jimmy. Bah. I, I, I'm sorry. I love my guys, Josh and Surratt. I hate these two stocks, Coke and Pepsi. I just hate them. All right, you're going to make me pay 20 times earnings for a stock that long-term grows earnings at 8%. I mean, I don't think you're going to lose money on it. I'm not saying go short Pepsi, but I just can't get excited about it. I'm sorry. I can't. I, mean, the, the, I know the, the value guy. The valuations do come down a bunch. That's part of the point yeah. of why some like it here. 3% dividend yield. It's even what, you know, Blah. what Adam Parker was talking about yesterday. Yield. 2.4% dividend yield, 20 times forward earnings, 8% long-term growth. Gives it a peg ratio of 2.4. If you tell me a peg ratio of 2.4 and you tell me that's for Amazon, well, at least there's something exciting there. You know, there's Amazon Web Services. There's whatever they're going to do in pharmaceuticals. Pepsi, we're going to sell like a few valuation, more cases of Pepsi. Yeah, go ahead. Jimmy, the, the, premium, the premium valuation historically has been as high as uh, 40% over the S&P. It is significantly less of a premium valuation now than you've had to pay in like three to five years. And the thing I would tell you is the reason it gets that premium valuation is because of its very, very, very long history of raising the dividend, of executing, of finding new growth around the world. They are better at this than almost any other publicly traded company. They've Josh, been at it for 100 years. It, it That's Josh, why investors I say this, pay up. I say this with tongue in cheek and with my arm around your shoulders. Go, go buy 100 shares, and in a year, you're going to be bored. You're going to be like watching paint dry. What about, you I say, mean, but of staples in general, you suggest they're, they're expensive. They are. They are. Still? They, they most of, yeah. They got overvalued. They, over they were very expensive. Now they're expensive. Now, I'm not saying, and by the way, I'm not saying this about Pepsi. I'm not saying if Josh buys it, it's going down. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm is saying GM is I can't get excited about this. Yes, it is exciting. Is General Motors exciting? It is it's exciting. the same price for 13 years. That has nothing, that has no bearing on where the price is going. Has no bearing whatsoever. But yes, Josh, it is exciting to answer your question. What? I didn't mean to turn this personal. I know when since you're well, coming at me, it's not personal. It's, I was going to bring it up. No, dead. Okay. I'm, being, I'm being serious. For, for 13 serious years, too. it's been between 30 and that 40. That has no bearing on that's where it's exciting. going next. That's it has. That's right. It Where's has it no bearing next? on where it's going next. But, Surat. Yeah, Surat. Sorry. Um, staples are one of your biggest there are. exposures, right? So why are you sitting there like a bystander? Because I'm just watching these two go at it. Right? All right, it's well, kind of entertainment. Let's okay, go. No, so, so why do I own staples? <laughs> it's part of a core portfolio. Oh, I have a diversified core portfolio. I have 60 stocks in there, and I want defensive stocks in Jimmy there. Jimmy says they're boring and they're too expensive. They are boring. Their prices have come down. Now, they're not gonna, you're not going to sit there and, and look at them and say, wow, look at the new product coming out of Diageo or yeah. you know, look, look at Constellation Brands. But I like these companies. I think they fit in a diversified portfolio. If you get an economy that doesn't do what we expect it to do, I want some downside protection, and this is what I'm going to look for. Yeah, All right. and they'd be defensive. Scott, yeah, yeah, that would, Scott that's wrap it up correct. real quick, Josh, because I got some breaking stuff I want to get to. Go ahead. OK, fair enough. 20-year average annual returns of 9% on Pepsi. I don't understand how that's boring. It, it makes absolutely no sense to me. Well, then why don't you buy some shares? I may. 
Okay. Lay by the bay.